Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. But no, seriously, you should get that taken a look at, Jake. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Evil Jake. Ano sumimasen flareku this. And introducing the winner of the prediction series, it is Yokozuna Mac. Oh, that felt good. It, I couldn't disagree anymore with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan lost the lot. Ro- lo- lo- <laughs> Ryan lost the. Like I said, you should get that taken a look at, Jake. <laughs> this is Evil Jake. <laughs> I've grown a goatee. I am from the mirror dimension now. <laughs> the upside and down. Apparently, he's even worse at podcasts than regular Jake. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but since Ryan lost the prediction series, he has to call our colleague Yokozuna. Well, I, I don't have uh, to. Call you don't him have that. to. What, what's his name again, Ryan? Uh, that is Yokozuna Mac. This doesn't happen very often. No, it I've, does this not. feels weird. Actually, I think it's happened four times. I know he's lost at I least four times. I have more losses than wins. You do, but so I was looking at I was looking back at the stats, and I know everybody listening to this is going to find out find this fascinating. <laughs> but we have done this is our twelfth Basho that yes. we have done. Mac has not been the loser or the winner in two Basho. Holy cow! <laughs> that is so rare. Yeah, everybody else has got some stuff sprinkled in, but Mac has either won or lost ten out of twelve of these things. So he's definitely that sounds like how Mac lives his life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything or nothing. <laughs> hey, Flarek, how are you doing? Sugoi. Subarashi. Subarashi. All right. Yeah, okay. we just went to Japan, so we learned a whole lot of lingo. Flarek has forgotten English. <laughs> Isn't Hi. that right? <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> so desne. Yeah, but he can understand it just fine. So des. Right? Or so ne? Or. <laughs> 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 Well, I, the, think, I think I think we've okay, reached okay, the limits. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. My my uh, I, I I ran out of vocabulary in Japanese, <laughs> so I'm back here. Uh, I'm sorry. Konnichiwa. Uh, hi. That. <laughs> uh, konbanwa. No, no, that was English. For no, that was English. Konbanwa, Ryan son. All right. That, Moving on. This yeah. has gone as far as it can. Uh, yeah. This is our recap episode of the Nagoya <laughs> Basho. If you couldn't have figured that out already, you rubes. Uh, <laughs> insulting everybody now. Ryan's Ryan. still got jet like he's cranky. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, we got that hard. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> but we do want to mention that we have a new intro episode that we not well, not new. It's like 2 months old now. But hey, check that out if you're new to Sumo before you dive into this episode and we say a whole bunch of things you don't understand. Yeah, spoiler warning. Spoilers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will be discussing the entirety of the Nagoya Basho, which happened over a week ago. If you're listening to this and you're still behind a couple of days, what's wrong with you? What, what are you, what are you <laughs> doing? What are you, Flarek, who just caught up today? Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, man. Friend of the show, Araiso Oyakata, would be so disappointed in you. Ooh, so very yes. disappointed. Oh, yeah, everybody saw how happy he looked in that picture he took with us. It was the highlight of the Basho He for got him, to meet sure. his favorite English language sumo podcaster. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, he was I, speechless. The man just was completely speechless. I always enjoy like meeting and greeting with the fans and just to see the bright smile on his face. Mm-hmm. It just really makes me a happy man. Yeah, he walked up to us in the morning, didn't he? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, he so walked up to us. Uh, ano sumimasen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a grand sumo breakdown. I'm like, yeah, yeah, come you on. You got it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what's your name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your name, buddy? <laughs> so just a great experience we had with our fans over in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jake or Mac or Flarek have something. To- <laughs> uh, you yes. couldn't have led into that a little better. Yeah, no, that was bad. Uh, there was something that unfortunately happened while we were in Kyoto. There was the Kyoto animation fire that happened. Uh very large coincidence that we happened to be there at the time, uh, but it was a huge tragedy. I think one of the biggest tragedies that happened in Japan in decades. A long time, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are various GoFundMes or uh, related uh, fundraising opportunities out there. I uh, highly encourage anybody who uh, has cash to spare to help out in that regard. Uh, we did see that a lot of those are meeting their goals and blowing them away. So that's, that's excellent that they have so much support. Yeah, there's a lot of love from the community, which is awesome to see. Uh, this is an interesting event for me because, or for all of us, because we were actually in Kyoto at the time. And uh, I was actually in Osaka when I saw the news. And I had the, it was kind of weird because I had like a moment of like just 
being like just kind of fear because I knew all my friends were in Kyoto at the same time. So I was like, oh my goodness, like, are, I, are you actually all, all, all okay? I sent that message to everyone. But then I realized, oh, wait, they're probably not planning to go to an animation studio. So they're probably <laughs> fine. We, we were all far away, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it was, we, by the time everybody regrouped at, uh, at our Airbnb, we were watching the news and stuff and trying to decipher as much of it as we can because it was all in Japanese. But mm. um, either way, though, that's, that's something that uh, affects a lot of people. I know there's a massive overlap between sumo fans and anime fans, just people interested in Japanese culture in general. But uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely opportunities out there to help. Mm, yeah. I, I, I will say I had the chance to go visit the grounds uh, when, when we were still there in Kyoto. And uh, I saw a number of people walking up with some flowers wanting to kind of uh, lay those at, like, at the building because they're just kind of really sorry about... They're just very sad about what happened. And yeah, I thought that was kind of really beautiful. A very, very influential studio that is... Um, I, I know they're, in particular, they're not like, um, uh, you know, like action shows like Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z kind of stuff. You know, they're more, they're more dedicated to like the slice of life or emotional type, uh, type shows and... In particular, Mac. Uh, I mean, I, I've started watching Violet Evergarden now mm. too. That's I know that's one of your favorites. Absolutely, no. And when I when I found out that was a studio that uh, was caught on fire, it, it just took the wind out of me. It, I was it's like, really close to home. Gotta yeah. be kidding, because Violet Evergarden. It's on Netflix. If you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, highly recommend it. But you will need a tissue box. It is. Oh yeah, I think I got to episode five, but it's before beautiful. I needed to like, yeah, take yes, a moment. It's a very well done story. <laughs> Excellent animation studio. Look forward to more in the future. Hopefully they recover soon and our hearts are definitely with them and their families. All right. So uh, there's the all right thing. I need to, yeah. <laughs> need to watch that. Uh, we also do have our midway episode, which is mostly just us talking about our travels in Japan and in particular how we got to deal with sumo over there uh, visiting uh, monuments and visiting a day of sumo. So if you want to go back and listen to our experiences with sumo in Japan, go back and listen to our midway episode. But finally, let's get on to the results of the Nagoya Basho, let's, as this is the Nagoya recap. Let's talk about spoilers, sumo. by the way. Yeah, yeah spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> so your Yusho winner spoilers. Uh, we've got Yusho <laughs> winner spoilers coming up here. Uh, wait, wait, are we, are we talking about spoilers? Yes, I would right. skip ahead uh, about ninety minutes if you haven't caught up yet on sumo. <laughs> okay. All right, and I'm that gonna, horse I'm, has been beaten pretty hard. So I'm going to go to the <laughs> living room. Uh, just uh, let me know when you're done. All right, can do. All right, so Flerick, Cocker, you won. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm still here. <laughs> Cocker, you won his sixth Yusho uh, June Yusho winner. We had two uh, as Hakuho and Terutsuyoshi both ended up with uh, twelve wins. Hakuho. Uh, only his 22nd June Yu show. Oh, dear. And Tedetsu Yoshi, his first June Yu show, as this is only his third Basho in the top division. The I, I think, it, sorry to interrupt, I think that's really cool that he got the June Yu show from literally the <laughs> lowest spot in right. the entire division. Yeah, I wonder I, if that's ever happened before. I, I, I mean, I'm sure it has. Yeah. I'm just too lazy to look it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a couple of, his first two Bashos in Makuuchi were subpar but not bad enough to kick him back down to Jurio, but then he came out yeah, two, pistons six, fire. Two six one. nines in a row. Yeah. Uh, luckily, there was a lot of luck with other people doing very poorly around him and people from Jurio not doing good enough to take his spot. So very lucky for Ted Tsuyoshi and a very impressive performance from him. Uh, special prizes, as I will ignore Jake trying to interrupt me again. <laughs> Damn the it. Gino Show <laughs> Technique <laughs> Prize. There were two of those awarded. Endo picking up his third one of those and Enho picking baby up Enho. his first one of those in Enho's, this is his second Makauchi Basho. Wait, so one guy got that prize twice? Sorry, Endo, Enho. One has a D. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> one has an H. Uh, the Shukun Show Outstanding Performance Prize goes to Tomokaze, his first career one. That goes for his win over Kakuryu on day... It was a later day. 13 or so? Uh, around yeah. there. Uh, he ended up with an 11-4 record. This is, once again, just his third career, Makuuchi Basho. He continues his streak of never having a Makekoshi and will be towards the top of the Magashira rankings in the next Basho. So hopefully he can keep that upward trajectory going. And the Kanto Show Fighting Spirit Prize goes to the aforementioned Terutsuyoshi, his first career one of those. So let's dive deeper into the Yusho and Jun Yusho races it was Kakuryu. Uh, spoilers. Yep. <clears throat> Once again, 
that that <laughs> dead horse has been beaten <laughs> way too hard. At I this just point. don't want no. somebody to know no. who won the U show without warning. I mean, we already announced it. Mm-hmm. So going into day fifteen, spoilers. And I, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> This was Cocker to you all the way. Uh, he was undefeated going into his match with Tomokaze, and by then he had a two-win buffer over Hakuho. Um, and so it ended up going into day 15 with a 13-1 Cocker to you against a 12-2 Hakuho. The final match of the Basho will decide the entire thing, which is exactly how you want to see things end up, but more often than not, it's just been decided a day or two before. Exactly. It's always a treat when it comes into the last day and yeah. it hasn't been decided. And it's the number of times where it's actually Yokozuna versus Yokozuna, who are still like healthy and looking really good. Very so rare few. nowadays. Yeah, it was an absolute treat. But yeah, so if Kakaryu wins, he'd be 14-1. and one. Hakuho would be 12-3. and three. Kakaryu would win by two matches and if Hakuho wins they would both be 13 and 2 which would force an immediate playoff between the two of them where the winner of that match would become the Yusho winner anyone's and, game anyone's game exactly and unfortunately for the people who love drama it went Kakuryu's <laughs> way as but we did people not- who love Kakuryu <laughs> <laughs> how'd it go right uh it went their way as we've mentioned Many times before, Kakri, who won the U show. Yeah, sorry, sorry yes. for spoilers. I'm <laughs> gonna hit Jake. This is really the only hard. thing, the only joke I'm gonna make the entire episode now. <laughs> okay, good. So we'll see how many people drop off from this podcast <laughs> because of that. Uh, so yeah, it was a very good match between the two mm-hmm. of them, uh, and not a result you typically see between a Hakuho and Kakryu match. Mm-mm. As I believe going into the match, Kakryu was 7 and uh, 41 against Hakuho. <laughs> <laughs> Little lopsided on that one. Yeah, just a smidge. So what are and, your, and two of those were playoffs that Hakuho had beaten Kakryu in. So, I mean, that basically means he was a lock to win this third one, yeah. right? Yeah, naturally. If, if, he had, if he had gotten that far. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what are your guys' overall impressions of Kakuryu, this Basho, going 14-1, and one, only losing that one match to Tomokaze? He and is, with injury rumors coming into the Basho. I was going to say, he is a trickster. He came in <laughs> saying like his back hurt. Like I completely wrote him off during the preview. I got to say, oh, he's probably not going to come in. He's doing the thing where Yokozuna's kind of complaining about injury and they're like, kind of setting the stage to actually not enter. But then he just tricked us all and said, ha-ha, just kidding, I'm good. I'm going to enter the Basho, and he's just been solid the entire time. It's the Kakuri who want, like, when he, at his top of his game, this is what he looks like. He's great at just, like, pushing and pulling, uh, like, very well-rounded. Like, he has a great, like, belt game as well. Like, every ever goes to the belt, he can win there as, as well. And he just looks solid. Like, no one can really take him down except Tomokaze. I was just about to comment on that. He <laughs> did overextend against Tomokaze right after the Tachi Ai, uh, Held a little bit ahead, and Tomokaze is like, ah, okay, uh, ole, and just let him go. <laughs> yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that match because I kind of came away from that being really impressed in Tomokaze uh, when the, they faced off because it was more so like Kakuryu definitely made a mistake that match. Yes. Like he had his head down. He went to go like grab the belt with, with his left hand, I think, and like he just didn't make it. And Tomokaze realized what's happening. said, oh, wait, he's not looking at me. And he, like, I should pull away. I He's should, overextending. Yeah. I need to go away. I should, like, back up. And it totally worked. And I, that was really impressive. Thus, uh, answering the age-old question, who is better, Tomokaze or Kakuryu? Yes. People have been asking themselves <laughs> since the beginning of day 13 when they faced off. <laughs> and <laughs> stopped asking at the end of day 13 or whichever day. We yeah, should they're look that like, up. Huh, I forget that you're not the one in control of the computer. And so that I have yeah, you've control got the of all the facts. You are. Are you looking up whether or not they faced off before? It was day thirteen. It was day thirteen. Hey, we were right the entire oh, okay. time. Good for us. Yeah, I I knew that. Yeah, big brain on Jake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, huge. So wait, is Tomokaze one hundred percent against head. the Yokozuna? Yes, he is one and zero against <laughs> Yokozuna in his wow, career. He's perfect. Yeah. yeah, he he has a career that's only going up. He is the chosen one, indeed. But no, I bring it back to Kakuri. Like other than that <laughs> one, <laughs> that yeah yeah. Let's not forget about the young bucks. <laughs> let's bring it back. Nah. Uh, like other than that one slip up, he's just been solid, like solid sumo, and he got Yusho for it. I'm super happy. The only thing that I can say is in like going against Kakuryu on this is that, and we'll talk about it more later. He did have kind of a weakened field to go up against in the second week because we've seen recently 
Kakaryu, once he hits like day 10, starts piling up the losses quite a bit, and that's when he's going up against the Ozeki and Hakuho, and he had no Ozeki to go up. I mean, no fault of his own. He mm-hmm. beat who was put in front of him, so you can't fault him at all. Yeah, he beat this uh, little unknown guy, a guy called Hakuho. But he beat <laughs> For a the Hakuho. Eighth time. The yeah. eighth time. He beat a Hakuho who is still clearly very bothered eh, by the torn eh, bicep. Eh, eh, <laughs> get, get, enough of your excuses. He was in the Jun Yusha race. <laughs> like, you know, this is a Hakuho who's still, like, he was in the race the whole entire time. The win is fantastic. No, I mean, obviously, winning a Yusha is always impressive. I'm just saying. I know what you're just saying. I'm just saying, forget that negativity <laughs> out here. <laughs> Kakuryu is the best. All right, but let's... Ah, dang it. All right. <laughs> let's again. transition over to Hakuho, and what do we think about his sumo four months out of the tearing the bicep in a match against Kakuryu? Yeah, he's obviously still injured. Like uh, He didn't have his uh, top performance, and like... Uh, never mind. I was trying to make a joke there. You guys can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The arm still seems to be pretty solid, solidly attached to the body, and I know that is step one in being healthy and doing good sumo. Um, and step two is being Hakuho, so just having a better mind than anybody else, so it doesn't matter if you're missing one of your limbs. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, or just the mind games that you are able to play. Uh, the oh, was it Aoyama. Aoyama in him? It's like, oh, uh, what are you doing? He messes with that guy all the time. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. So on day whatever the heck it was, Aoyama. You have the power. Uh, it was day six. Yeah. I, I think with day my si- big brain. Day six, Aoyama versus No, I'm Hako. looking at him. Yeah. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm going to use In my big name. brain. Yeah. So yeah, day six, Hakuho, Aoyama went up against each other, a match that Hakuho ended up winning. Uh, but before they had their match, Hakuho just kind of refused to go down for the Tachi Eye for over a minute. Uh, Even the Gyoji's like, uh, come on. Yeah. yeah. They were trying to egg him along, and then the night after that happened, he got a, another one of those Hakuho reprimands for that behavior from, I believe, the head Shimpan for this Basho. And so we didn't really see that much again, but Hakuho's still playing his mind games or whatever with the Rikshi. Yeah, uh, against Aoyama, he is 20 and 1. Ooh. Ooh. When did that 1 happen? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm more curious about the one. Yeah. I wonder if it, (laughs) it's a Fusen. (laughs) (laughs) Back in 2015, it was a Fusen win. (laughs) That'll do it. That'll do it. But either way, if he's, even if he's still injured at this point, obviously want to keep watching that. He still puts up amazing performances. Yeah. So projecting forward, we're clearly in a time of upheaval in the upper ranks of sumo. And nobody really seeming to want to grab that brass ring and declare themselves as the next guy. To... What about the f- all four Ozeki that we have? Well, yeah. Once again, we'll get to those guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say there's there's a couple people that jumped out at me who were kind of looking to like jump up, uh, like to kind of fill that void. Uh, the two people uh, I saw was obviously uh, Tomokaze. He's definitely someone like we say he's nothing but rise. But that's because he's never had a Makikoshi a losing record uh, since he started sumo, but. He's only had a handful of matches. I think his match against Kak- Kakuryu is his only ever match against a Sanyaku opponent. We really can't... I don't think we can really say that he... He could very well be the next guy, but we haven't seen him go up against the upper level of competition to know for sure that he's going to hold up to that level. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm just I'm just saying that the he's he's very promising. Yeah. We haven't seen anybody like consistent. No, is kind of I what I'm think saying. we have. And his name is Abi. Oh, I want to talk about Abi next. Go, no. go, oh, Mac. Good. No, go. We have seen his performances change. We've seen him do exceptionally well, and then he's had a, maybe one or two basho here and there where he hasn't done as amazing. But he's consistent. Right now, he's had a consistent track. He's still climbing. This past one, eight and seven, not awful. Still Kachikoshi, still able to hang with the big guys at the top. I think eventually Abi can rise to the challenge. Well, he was eight and seven, but. He did get a uh, a Fusen win, so seven and seven in the ring, that's mm-hmm. nothing, and that's nothing to be you know flying at his current rank. on day mm-hmm. fifteen. Hey, that's yeah. just smart sumo. <laughs> that's just smart sumo. exactly. So what we're saying basically is that he's trash. Hey, 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 oh. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, well, no, 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 no. He's he's twenty five years old. He's still uh, he's kind of coming into the prime years, uh, and yeah, I, I agree with you. I. I wasn't gonna guess that that that's where you were going with your with your pick, but yeah, I I, I do think you've you've kind of helped sway me here. 
Yeah, I I kind of I came out of this uh, Basho actually becoming a huge Abi fan. I would say before, like I kind of liked him. Like I loved it when he got the Kimboshi versus Hakuho, and like he uh, fist bumped his Sukibito or someone on the railing. I think when he was walking mm. back. Mm. So I, I he definitely has some like uh, some tude, some attitude. Which he I, won you over with that henka, didn't he? Uh, oh yeah, the henka. Was <laughs> it was good. a I, flying to that. henka. <laughs> I'm building to that. Like uh, it kind of builds onto my Kota Shogi uh, Ku is a little bit of a dick theory or something like that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, that's an old. No, this is that, this is a long running joke that that's we've an had ancient for a while. theory from Flair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I don't think anybody else on the podcast has jumped on board with. No. Yeah, it's my, uh, the, the the background on that is is based purely on like Kota Shogi who keeps on getting like a like raw deal with like people hanking hanking him. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's probably because he always runs forward at the Tachi Eye, no matter what is going to happen. Flair sounds just, very logical. Or <laughs> maybe he just like rubbed like a couple people the wrong way, so you want to hank him every single time. I don't know, dude. I think you're just putting on the tinfoil mawashi here and taking it a little too far. <laughs> probably a little bit, but I definitely like. I said, I like people who who are willing to hanka. So that's really fantastic. And I, the one thing I really enjoyed was match versus Aoyama. Uh, he ended up losing that match, but he was trying to outpush Aoyama in like a pushing game. Mm-hmm. And I, mean, I when really pushing respect is your that. specialty. I mean, that's all that Abi does. I mean, I don't really give him any extra respect. That's what no, Abi no, no. does. But he's going against Aoyama. Like, are you gonna like Abi doesn't know how to do anything else? Oh, He'll learn. Oh yeah, he will. Did learn. you watch his matches? One this or show? two matches. Like does three. not a trend change. Okay, I've seen at least he's three learning, matches right? of where he's he learning. was able to grab the belt and like throw him down very convincingly. I would say. Like I was super impressed, like how short of time, like he was able to th- add like at least one belt throw to his game. I'm not buying it. He yet, has like but... Henka going on as well. Uh, I don't know. He he's shown some growth for he's me. He's got that mad Henka game, yo. Yeah, Matt. You know, it with his footwork, his Oshi that is definitely is part of his uh, stuff. He should be doing because he's super fast at sidestepping. To Flerick's credit here, on day nine, uh, he beat Mitakiyumi, which is great on its own. But he beat him by Uwate Nage. He beat him by a throw. Every single one of his other wins is a push out or a pull down or something like that. Um, so I, I, I think you guys are probably both right here that he's not very good at that stuff yet. But I think that he's trying, but he's getting there, but beating Mitaki Yumi on the belt. Uh, I, I don't remember the match off the top of my head if it was like belt all the way or what. But like that, I, I think it's still uh, it's proof that he is trying to vary it up and he doesn't really have any options if he wants to get any higher than he is. So it's good that he's trying. Mm, yeah. This isn't really where I was intending the conversation to go, but I like what we're getting here. But I'm kind of surprised that you guys are choosing, like, as the next up and comers, uh, like, to take the top spots as Abi and Tomokaze when we have guys like Mitakeyumi, Takakesho, Asanoyama, all who have won you shows. I, I guess my point of view is he, he's somebody that I know I personally haven't given enough credit to. I, I do think that, like, a Mitakeyumi and a healthy Takayasu are the kind of guys that in the back of my mind are, are like the ones that I consider the favorites to be, you know, to, mm-hmm. to have a breakout. But I don't know. Abby is, Abby is definitely not a guy that I am into as much as I know Mac is and Flarek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would say like, those are probably still the favorite choices, mm. but when you say like, uh, like there's a void at the top, like we definitely didn't have four Ozeki come uh, at the end of this tournament. He definitely showed me some, I guess, some desire like with uh, Mm -hmm. the way like the with his willingness to change his techniques and also be learning to get some wins at the top of the division he showed me as someone that says hey i want to hang up here and i want to get the top ranks i deserve to be up here exactly and i want to go higher yeah and he also i feel obby i feel like he has a bit of an ego which i I oh that's you have to have an ego You have to. I, I in that sense, I would put him in the same bucket as somebody like Hokuto Fuji. That's probably going to be a mainstay for a while. I agree. One of the you know some uh, one of the only other guys that uh, has a uh, a decent amount of character that they show in the ring that they'll probably get admonished for at some point. Now you can't you can't deny that ranks, one. Yeah. Right? You, well, you, no. You think, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like Hokuto Fuji. I was oh, going to yeah. say, you think Hokuto Fuji has uh, some character? The foot stamps. The foot oh. stamps. He, he's one of those guys that's like really intense mm. right before the matches go. Yeah, I agree with you there. I guess the little I've seen like of some interview, he seems like the most humblest guy ever, I would say. Well, I think basing somebody's true personality on a sumo interview, you're probably going to get the same answer every time. That's very possible. <laughs> he, yeah. He's going to do his best. Yeah, I remember yes. he was... He will ta- gamberize. He will gamberize. He was, like, talking, like, one of his favorite, uh, like, mangas, like, uh, like and a, and a comic, Japanese comic books, like, was uh, some, like, a boxing one. It was, like, a sports manga. So it's, like, all about, like, what training they did and, like, what te- technique they're going to learn for the next match. match. 
And like he said, like he learned, like he go into a swimming pool and doing like those like squat jumps in the mm. swimming pool to kind of like say, like save his knees, but still get like a good workout. He said he learned that uh, from the manga and he was, <laughs> that's what he was doing as training for at least a little bit. I thought that was just adorable. <laughs> little things like that. I think uh, you don't get very many of them. Those little flashes of like what they're really like. Mm-hmm. At least not in over here in America. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When we don't, when we can't understand the, the interviews just on a first watch or something, if we need it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I love little tidbits like that. I just to add a little bit more variety to the personalities of the guys that you see acting very, very similarly and humbly on the dohyo. Well, kind of where I was trying to go about 10 to 15 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, no, Ryan, we, no, we no, got no, something no. else we, going. We got this. Uh, <laughs> with Hakuho. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember where I was fully going, <laughs> but I, it was somewhere along the lines of Hakuho has this clearly still very injured arm. And I mean, he's still the greatest of all time, so you expect great performances out of him. But like, we still are probably going to expect a couple more you show out of him just because there isn't a clearly defined next person to step up and take his place. There's nobody that is even a 70% Hakuho at this point to come up and challenge consistently for you shows. That's why we're getting these Tamawashis, Asanoyamas, Tochinoshins, Takakeshos winning all these you shows because there isn't a person that we clearly know is the next guy to go up to the spot. So until that happens, Hakuho is still probably going to rack up a couple more you show despite not being 100%. Okay, you need to lead in with that a little bit better next time because that is not what we got. So let's out of that talk question. about Abby some more. Well, yeah. let's go back to Abby. That sounds good. Because no, I, I, know I, what you mean. I, I said, like, oh, nobody's grabbed the brass ring, and then, like, people jumped in. So we but just you left with... it open. So it's like, are you talking to the yeah. I didn't finish talking... my sentence before people interrupted. You've got to be faster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think the three of us should drive the bus. Oh, together. I agree. <laughs> I, th- I think it would be interesting. I think the one thing with a uh, hockey wheel aging, like, he's no longer like, like a two steps or five steps ahead everyone else like maybe he's mentally like, uh, he is but physically definitely mental like he has that mental game down it's fantastic uh but i think he's there's right now i feel like he's probably like like versus kaku it's anyone's game like if they did that match like five more times maybe haka hill would come out as the winner of those and so i think like right now like with the yokozuna he seems to be on parody with that as time goes on it's very possible it will be i i i, I guess i yeah i think it's gonna be interesting because i think i don't think he's a favorite to be you show i think it's gonna be like anyone's game as he starts to decline yeah and and i think um another thing that we kind of are running into here is that we have the the top two guys hakuho obviously ahead by a mile of kakuryu other than you know this you show but you know what i mean <laughs> uh but like those those two guys are like very clearly the top guys but there there's a there's this gap there that you'd expect to be filled by like you know some senior ozeki uh, and then there's like the young guys that are, you know, going to be fighting for that title of the best guy five years from now. Right. Um, you'd kind of expect there to be another generation in the middle. And that's kind of where Goedo, Takayasu, Tochi Notion are in. But we I, I think pretty much everybody's kind of where it seems like the sumo fan world. We're kind of on the same page that those three guys are unlikely to take that next step to be the Yokozuna that happened that that comes around after Hakuho Kakuyu retire there there's kind of a there, there's nobody in that particular little generation that is clearly going to step up like if Hakuho and Kakuyu retired right now do you think any of those three would be Yokozuna within a year not, I think it's unlikely yeah yeah, yeah. not They're with not, the random you show winners we've been getting yeah, you would have expected yeah. one of those guys to rack up one or two at this yeah, point yeah and of those three guys they they all have tremendous injury issues or are Goedo yeah, and, exactly. and therefore are unlikely to step up. I, I think one of the reasons why I thought to the uh, kind of the younger crowd, uh, when Ryan was kind of when he had kind of asked this question was because I agree with you. I think the kind of generation uh, below Hakuho is not really been showing anyone like stepping above, like I'm going to be the best after Hakuho mm-hmm. goes away. Exactly. And so I'm kind of expected from the younger generation. Like mm-hmm. they're obviously not there right now, but I'm seeing some drive and, you know, like given some time, like Tomokase, like his first ever against the Yokozuna, he uh, he beats the the one the Yokozuna who got the Yisho. Mm-hmm. I think that's super impressive. Yeah, well, I think. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I was going to say um, <laughs> I, we we overlooked we overlooked one, but Takakesho as well. Yes, he was injured for this last one, but Takakesho is another dynamic performer yep. that gives everything he's got in each match. So I think eventually, yeah, he'll be back to the Ozeki rank. Potentially, could be a Yokozuna. 
I think he's another one of those guys that could rise to the challenge. Before that injury, he was definitely the most consistent guy mm-hmm. at the top. I mean, obviously getting that Ozeki run with uh, yeah. I mean, three straight double-digit performances with a U right. show and a junior exactly. show thrown in there. Yeah. So he definitely looked like the next guy that could take that step, despite everybody in the sumo world that knows way more than us saying it's never going to happen <laughs> just because of his body type. Uh, but he definitely was yeah. the person that was performing the best uh, in that, like, tier just below the Yokozuna. So let's dive in a little deeper into what happened to the Ozeki in this Basho uh, or the Nozeki that happened in this Basho. So another we started Nozeki. off before, well, not another Nozeki. I'm pretty sure this is our first Nozeki. We've had Nokozunas, but I'm pretty sure this is our first Nozeki. Nozeki flows a lot better than Nokozuna. Yeah, they both flow pretty well. <laughs> anyway, I'm with you, Ryan. Pretty good. Both good. So Takake show before Nagoya could even kick off was Kyujo before the Basho started because of the injury he sustained in his win against Mitaki Yumi in the Natsu Basho. Uh, this is unfortunately Takake show's second straight losing record due to that injury. And so he will be Sekiwake for the Aki tournament. But once again, as we all know, he will have the chance to regain his Ozeki rank with 10 wins. And if it were up to Takakesho, he would have been in the Nagoya Basho, whether that would have been good for him or not. But luckily, we believe luckily for him, his Oyakata stepped in and told him, you're not doing this. He didn't have any practice against any Sekitori leading up to the Basho. So for his Oyakata, it wasn't good enough for him to enter. Put me in, coach. Put me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as we've discussed before, he's a he's he's just a just a baby. I mean, I mean, he's got plenty of time here that. It's better for him to sit we out and heal. 300 or so pound baby. <laughs> yeah, sweet little baby Takagi. Baby show. boy. And so that's one Ozeki that is now 0 and 15 for the Basho. The next Ozeki that was 0 and 15 for the Basho was Tochi Noshin. <laughs> and unfortunately for him, he entered the Basho. He yeah. started off 0 and 5 and never even looked close to winning a single match. He has lingering knee issues, which apparently kind of crept up on him at the end of Natsu, which is what kept him from getting that 10th win uh, until he had the Henka against Kakuryu on day 14. And he also oh, had beautiful. a mm-hmm. shoulder yeah. a shoulder injury from just the week prior to the Basho. Another one of those, like, just before the tournament starts injuries that Tochi Noshin always seems to get now that he is an Ozeki. And so Tochi Noshin will be Kadoban for the third time in just six Bashos as an Ozeki. He'll be entering his seventh Basho as an Ozeki in Aki. And he's had four losing records as an Ozeki out of six overall. So that's not very good. That is not very good. So mm-hmm. out of two Ozeki, we are currently 0 and 15 or 0 and 30 for a record. <laughs> uh, we move on to Goedo. I was going to say, Goedo is starting to look pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's at least let's, there. Le- let's read the next paragraph yeah. of the outline real quick, though. <laughs> oh, okay. So Goedo started off three and four. So obviously right there, not good for an Ozeki. And then hearing that the GSB crew was going to be showing up on day eight to throw all the insults his way, he decided, nah, I'm good and backed out of the tournament despite clearly being able to fight back and get a Kachi Koshi. That coward. And <laughs> just a huge dick move on Goedo's part there to deny us our joy of yelling at him. Uh, he's allegedly fighting some injuries. That yeah, whatever. Who knows when those came about? Once again, alleged injuries. Uh, but Goedo will also be Kadoban as he ended up three and 12 with an overall record after pulling out on day eight. Uh, he will be Kadoban for the eighth time in his career in 30 Bashos as an Ozeki. So just under 33% of the time he gets a losing record as an Ozeki. So we are now three and 45 for our Ozeki records, but there's still one more uh, Takeyasu. He's been fairly consistent not necessarily getting double digit wins, but he's been getting winning records. He started off seven and one. He looked amazing. I'm sorry. I think he started off six and one. Uh, well, yeah, he started off seven and one. Sorry. I'm confusing myself in my own head. Spit it out, Ryan. Yep. Get it out. But he injured himself in his seventh win against Tamawashi on day eight. We were there live. We saw it immediately after the match. He was holding that elbow. I'm glad you clarified. Cause we really did not see anything during the match. <laughs> We well, yeah, we, we, we did it. Yeah, we did <laughs> yeah. it. Like, I, I know, know it happened mean. mid-match, but like mm-hmm. as soon as the match was over, we knew something happened. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, we were on the opposite side of the stadium from the actual arm pull, so we just kind of saw him win and then like start crying. It was so weird. <laughs> yes. 
we had we had no idea how that how he won the match or how he got hurt. <laughs> so Takayasu was on pace to compete for the U show or the June U show at that point, but after uh, facing off against Tamawashi, the elbow taker, uh, he stayed in for two more days, going one and one, uh, getting himself to an eight and two record which is Kachi Koshi. He won't be Kadoban. He immediately said, yep, that's good enough for me, and yep. took off for the remaining five days, handing Hakuho a Fusen win, by the way. Uh, so yeah, Takeyasu was the only Ozeki with a winning record, but he did sustain that injury, which hopefully will not extend into Aki in effect as a performance. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that he pulled out. It's the same sort of deal as Taka Keisho. Uh, you don't want to force it. And for Taka Keisho, he would have had to win eight times injured, which would have been awful. Takiyasu luckily only had to win one time injured in order to get that eight. I'm really glad that he pulled out after that because he was making some statements that sounded like he was going to stay in after mm. that but he got that win and by the time the next day rolled around he was like yeah never mind yeah you, you think his coach came in like no no you're saying out. i don't think, be stupid i think he uh he heard my prayers <laughs> 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 what does jake think <laughs> let me check his twitter <laughs> we uh you know we dm now and then you know oh, yeah? just uh, you know just uh just thing between friends well yeah i'm sure i bought some of his merch at friend uh, of the oh, podcast yes, kisano yeah. sato who that's right is uh in Takeyasu stable like gave him our information after we met up with Kise no Sato he was, earlier that day. Yeah, so friend of the show Kise no Sato was like, "Hey, Takeyasu, Jake bought a good deal of your merch. Uh, I think that you should listen to this guy uh, and repay in kind and buy our merch." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, make merch for GSB <laughs> <laughs> and then buy it. We are going to have to get some pretty big T-shirts. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Overall, for our Ozeki, we had a record of 11 and 60, Ouch. which is an 18% winning percentage for the Ozeki in this Basho, which, uh, according to my math, is not good. You are correct. Ryan did the numbers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and per Tachiai, that is the first time that a Basho that started off with four Ozeki ended with none competing. So some historical significance to all four of those guys pulling out. So we talked a lot about the top ranked guys and in depth and some of the up and comers. So let's just do a couple of quick points on some of the other guys in the top ranks. Uh, we have Mitaki Yumi with his Mitaki Yumi special of uh, nine and six or eight and seven at Sekiwake. Mm-hmm. Anybody got anything niner. else to say? Yep. I don't. Oh, All right. Yep. He's back. <laughs> yep. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's on the record of like the most like. Uh, a huge number of Bashos like in Sanyaku, but not Ozeki. Consecutive or yeah. Sanyaku like Junior Bashos. Junior Sanyaku, yeah. yeah, yeah without like, like 15 or something like that. It's, it's been 15 since or 16 now. Yeah, yeah. March of 2017, he has been either Komasubi or Sekiwake. And always won. He, he's never been... Well, oh, no, that makes sense. He's... Mm-hmm. Because they they only they only list Komasubi two or Sekiwake two if there's more than two of them. Yeah. Never mind. That's not a that's not yeah. a fun fact. <laughs> uh, his Sekiwake mate for Nagoya Tamawashi crapped the bed real hard, uh, and still somehow won a U show in January. That was oh, yeah. January. That was January. Mm-hmm. I don't... So he's in the running for uh, Rikishi of the Year. Yeah. He, he's like he's like okay, I did my thing for the whole year. Let's just kind of take. <laughs> well, break. he he's an every other Basho kind of guy recently and. Last time he was, I believe, ten and five, and so this time he was five and ten. So next time, expect a double digit record for Tamawashi and him to jump back into the Sanyaku ranks. It's gonna happen. There That's go. just how it works. <laughs> jump <laughs> uncanny. Yeah, jump down, have an easier competition, get the ten and five. You know, once harder at the Yokozuna, just go for the five I and mean, ten. It maybe, allows him to mine Kimboshi. Kimboshis exactly. Yeah. Get uh, extra permanent pay raise for those Kimboshis. There we go. He has actually not been out of the joy since a long time. 2016 oh, wow. yeah. so i mean he's he's been facing the same guys regardless of his rank but yeah for the last year it's basically just been good bad good bad good bad <laughs> really more good than we expected and then bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> he made up for it and then we already talked about abby a little bit he hanked his fun. way on day 15 mm-hmm. to a kachikoshi in his first basho heroic as a <laughs> beautiful <laughs> komosubi <laughs> And his also first time Komosubi mate Ryuden 
crap the bed significantly as well. But unfortunately for him, he doesn't have shame. a you show to cuddle in his bed to cry himself to sleep. He'll be okay. Yeah. He'll be okay. He'll recover. We need mm-hmm. some new sheets up in this metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> the, is there anybody else of note that we haven't mentioned? I think we mentioned a little bit before Endo had himself a heck of a tournament. Uh, that he did. But before we were talking about Endo, I was going to say Enho. Enho. Ooh. He got his first Kachikoshi in the Makauchi division. Ended up with a 9-6 and six record. Got himself a technique prize. Mm -hmm. Our little baby boy's growing up. He definitely is. He is, I think, he is why I love sumo. (laughs) (laughs) I think I found out. Hold on, hold on. Pretty sure Flarek's tearing up a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's, he's just so small, <laughs> and he tries so hard. He's just trying his best out there, <laughs> and he's winning. Leave it's him great. Alone. Just it's leave finally him working out for our little baby at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I I I think it was on the day we were there. Like my brother was uh, watching sumo for the first time, so he was like, "Oh, okay. So what's going on?" I I kind of gave him Enho as someone to kind of latch on. It's like, so okay, this guy is super tiny, uh, but he's still like facing these guys and he's still winning. Uh, watch out for him. It's gonna be super exciting. And like he definitely caught on to that. He's one of the Richie that he remembered because he's just such a rememberable, awesome, wee baby tiny. It's guy. one of like the two <laughs> names of sumo wrestlers that all of our wives know and love. Carolyn mm-hmm. always asks, Is that Enho? Is that Enho? I mean like, he's no no, that's Abby. He's also totally a dime piece. I mean, oh, he's, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gabby fell in love with him the Perfect instant dime. she saw his totally. adorable mostly unclothed body <laughs> <laughs> it also helps that he is not like quite as spherical as the rest yeah mm-hmm. that uh that certainly earns him some attractive points i think yeah only other one i wanted to mention was ichi nojo oh yeah he got a keen boshi he, over he hakuho, hakuho and had a nine and six record not bad not bad i mm-hmm. wonder so koto shogiku was under consideration for a special prize because he beat hakuho right and he didn't end up getting it because he was seven and eight and you only get special prizes. As far as we know, if you have a winning record, I don't think anybody has gotten a special prize with a losing record. So we're pretty sure that's the consideration. But Ichi Nojo finished nine and six, also beat Hakuho. Why was he not in consideration for outstanding performance? A valid question. Because everyone's disappointed in Ichi Nojo. <laughs> <laughs> Even with that win, it's just like, yeah, we expected this of you. You should do better always Mm -hmm. you're freaking 500 pounds how are you not crushing everybody around you (laughs) but still nine and six nothing to you know completely get mad at speaking of nine and six and guys that we probably won't speak of for any other reason kodoeko kodoeko yeah Yeah. he's good on you kodoeko good on you he's he is uh he's showing to be er, er, in the last few basho he's he's kind of started uh working his way into that action fighter kind of role uh you know like his his bouts are pretty exciting and the ones that he shows up for and, and wins are, are always pretty impressive. He just needs to do more of them. You know what? While we're handing out props to guys that got a 9-6 and six record that we never, ever, and I mean ever, talk about on this podcast. <laughs> Sadanomi. Good for you, Sadanomi. <laughs> Good boy. job, buddy. Well done, one of the seven Umis. <laughs> and uh, we don't need to talk about Koto Yuki, that rat bastard. He did <laughs> not at all. He did well, but that's <laughs> to the detriment to, of the rest of the Jake's world. To Jake's chagrin. Yeah. So... In addition to the Yusho winner for Makauchi, we did have five other Yusho winners in the lower divisions. So in Jurio, uh, spoiler alert for the lower division Spoilers. Yusho winners. Dang it. it <laughs> you beat me to the dead horse joke. It had been a long enough time that it was funny again. Damn it. Sudo Gisho won the Jurio Yusho with a 13-2 record. That is his first career Jurio, Jurio Yusho after 22 straight Basho in Jurio. So after he got to Jurio, never dropped down to Makushita, and I believe he's finally going to make his Makuuchi debut after 22 straight Basho in Jurio. What's more impressive, him riding that riding that line for 22 straight Basho or Mitakiyumi staying Sekiwake or Komosubi <laughs> for like three years? I mean, 100% <laughs> Mitakiyumi, it's not even close. Yeah. <laughs> okay, impressive as far as skill, yes. Impressive <laughs> as far as fun facts, I think they're both equivalent. I mean, he's only about a year behind Tsurugisho at this point. Uh, the Makushito... Makushita, Makushita. <laughs> Yusho like winner better. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> went to Chio Noo. He has spent 31 Bashos combined, or no, sorry, 31 Bashos in Jurio and 15 in Makushta. He's been kind of jumping back and forth. And this is his first career Yusho in any division. He's like 28, 29. So I don't know that we expect any big things out of Chio Noo. Uh, Sandanme, this is a guy we should maybe expect some big things out of. Tere Sawa, this was his first Basho in Sandanme, and he won the Yusho there. 
uh, his third Basho overall, and he had won the Jono Kuchi Yusho in his first career Basho. So a very promising start for Terry Sawa. And one loss separated him from the Joni Don Yusho last time. Yes. Uh, the Joni Don Yusho this time went to Toki Sake. Uh, this is his second career Basho, and he was 6-1 in Jono Kuchi, so a very promising start for him, but... We'll see how he does once he starts facing uh, Makushta people. We know that that can really start to be the meat grinder that separates who's going to rise fast and who's going to get stuck. And finally, in Jono Kuchi, kind of had an interesting situation there. Moto Bayashi ended up winning the Jono Kuchi Yusho there, and it was his first career Basho. But he was one of three Rikshi within the Naruto Baya that were undefeated in Jono Kuchi. And, and a Naruto Yopadashi as well on the match oh really yeah mm. yeah very cool but since they're all in the same heya they can't face each other there during the tournament so they didn't have like they typically match people up that have the same record so all your like six and oh guys face off against each other so you could i they try to schedule it to avoid a playoff at all costs but since all these guys were in the same heya they couldn't do that, so we ended up having a three-way playoff to determine the winner, which Motobayashi ended up winning. The other two being Marusho and Sakurai. Yeah. yeah. And the way a three-way playoff works, in case you don't know, is you just have... I don't know how the matches are decided who faces off first, but basically you just have a round robin of everybody facing each other, and that goes until somebody's won twice in a row. Exactly. You have to win two matches in a row. Yeah. So it could go on endlessly. That would be so cool (laughs) if it went like all day. That'd be awesome. Yeah. The matches were pretty cool. Uh, The best part, though, is like they had a camera cut to uh, Naruto Oyakata like in the corner in the Raptors, and he just had like a big smile, like a single tear going down. His- <laughs> uh, decidedly not friend of the podcast, Naruto Oyakata. No, that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He saw us coming and promptly turned around. We all wisely ignored each other when we passed in the hallway there. So yeah. <laughs> we got beef. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Here's the one of the people we saw early morning on day eight when we were visiting, and like I definitely when we, I talked about this before, but when we made eye contact, we definitely looked at each other, and I knew who he was, and he knew I could tell he knew who I was. <laughs> he knew, and then he I walked knew. away. Yes, and I thought then he you were disappeared. Gonna, thought you were gonna say I knew who he was, and he knew who I was. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> is that the is that the Grand Sumo breakdown, guys? <gasps> is it? Oh, I, I need to go away. <laughs> I need to go get my Sharpie so that they can sign my shirt. Oh, no. Where'd they go? Oh, no. Uh, some other storylines. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice, quick, simple, right. breezy transition to some other things that happened in the lower divisions. Solid. You're killing it. Oh, mm-hmm. just dominating this podcast. <laughs> I dominated the prediction series. Yokozuna Mac. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, unfortunately, Amanishki has oh, finally Sunday. reached the end of the line. The brutal and merciless Ryuko... Uh, just <laughs> absolutely brutal. thrashed and yeah. dissing on my boy slayer of geezers mm-hmm. like a great Aww. white shark biting into the helpless body of a bikini girl just thrashed <laughs> Amanishki about mm-hmm. <laughs> destroying all parts of him forcing Amanishki to retire prematurely at the young young age of 40 I think he laughed while he did it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Ryuko is not a monster <laughs> that's not what his blood covered face said after the end of that match he mm-hmm. was sorry he, he felt so, awful. he was sorry he didn't finish him off, but he, he felt awful. Ryuko walks to the back afterwards, covered in blood, and somebody's like, "Are you okay?" And he goes, "It's not my blood." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, so after a match with Ryuko, uh, Amanishki was injured, had to pull out of the tournament, and unfortunately, where he was in Jurio, that would mean he would drop down to Makushta. Amanishki's not about that life anymore, and decided <laughs> it was better to retire. Yeah. He ain't gonna be nobody's Suke Bito. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he would not have nope. been at Tsuke Bito. <laughs> nope. Don't think that's quite how that works. Uh, so yeah, you can look forward to a probable bonus episode about Amanishki in the future. He is not a Yokozuna, but he is definitely a guy with a lot of history to his name. Yeah, I got some quotes uh, from the Ryuko, uh, Ryuko and Amanishki stuff. Uh, Ryuko obviously felt very, very sorry. Uh, he said, I felt, I feel terribly sorry, confess to my one-year-old. <laughs> I knew it was sorry. Yep. Uh, when Ryuko was just one uh, one year old, Amnishki was already a secretary. I've been watching it. <laughs> yeah. Grandpa, grandpa be old, yo. <laughs> grandpa be old. Yeah, yeah. I've been Uncle watching Sumo. him, admiring for a long time. I think he's strong and awesome. I'm glad I was able to face him, and I am even more happy to get my first win as a secretary against him. But, of course, the injury left a bad aftertaste in his mouth. 
Uh, they asked uh, Amdishki about how much the, he hates uh, Ryuko a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, oh, no, I think it's nice uh, to have fought my last fight against Ryuko to finish my career against such a young kid. I thought I could execute the throw, but I couldn't. And the next thing I know, I was looking at the ceiling. Instead, he got executed. He got <laughs> executed. Uh, especially his knee. Uh, it was good sumo, wasn't it? I have no regrets. It's good that I could fight with a young Rikshi like him. The great Yokozuna and Takanohana passed me the baton before, and now I'm passing it to the young guy. I think it's a beautiful thing. And he's uh, alluding to Takanohana, a former Yokozuna during the 90s. Uh, his last match was actually against uh, Amnishiki, oh, and he mm. got a Kimboshi against him. Yeah, and to honor Amanishiki, Duyuko uh, had his bloodlust sated, and so he decided not to win very many matches after that, too. <laughs> nope. Honor his defeat of Amanishi. He went four and eleven. Yeah, he started four and two, and uh, it did not get very much better from because there. Because Amanishi announced his in tie, and that just took all the wind out of his sails. Ryuko was like, "I've done what I came here to do," and <laughs> yeah. he just didn't really wrestle Back the rest to of the back time. Back to Makushita. Back to Makushita. <laughs> Getting paid no. is overrated. He'll be back. He was put on this Jurio division for one purpose. <laughs> He was here to retire people and chew bubble gum, and he was all out of bubble gum. But then he found some more (laughs) and lost nine times in a row. Uh, Some other possible news may be possibly hinting at another Intai in the future. Uh, Ikioi has been struggling as of late. He's going to find himself towards the bottom of the Jirio rankings. And just some stuff we saw on Twitter recently is that the person who was using Ikioi's Kabu or elder name recently vacated it and started using another one, which I believe think that means that he's freeing it up for Ikioi in case Ikioi yeah. decides to retire soon. I think that's the story. Kabu and Elber, Elder Names just confuse the ever-loving mm. crap out of me. Yeah, yeah, it's a confusing system. Uh, I will we'll say this is the exact same thing that happened with Kisno Sato uh, with Arizo. Like someone else was using it for a long time. But I think uh, right bef- uh, a couple boshes before he retired, uh, that got freed up. It's kind of a, I agree with you. It's kind of a sign that he's thinking it's. I'm probably going to be retiring soon. It's speculation at this point, but like it, it's something that is a pattern in the past that we can probably assume that he's at least considering it more than he was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't expect anybody at this table to be able to answer this question. But oh like, yeah, try what, us. What would happen? <laughs> like, say the guy that was using the Araiso name, like Kisa Nosato, just suddenly retired, and like, does that guy just like, does he sumo? For the elder stock. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. A sumo off? A yeah, sumo, sumo off. off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Except they wear inflatable sumo suits like at a party. Indeed. Maybe and that they, just forces him to change names and right away. Chan- yeah. But, uh, he would be forced to... And the, and, uh, the rules are you have to have a copy uh, stock to stay in the Japanese uh, Sumo Association and also get a paid as well. It's kind of a... There's 105 names. It's kind of like... Almost like a retirement system. Uh, you have to like be in a number of matches or do really well to qualify to even like purchase one. Uh, so it's, it's so uh, he would take, he would definitely take up the uh, stock, but the person who had it would probably have to find another way or he's kicked out of okay. the uh, Japanese sumo association. Even if he's like a coach from, because it, it's kind of like Ikioi owned this name, the share of stock. Yes, he was just right. like loaning its use to somebody, right? Exactly. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. That makes some more sense, but until I hear it from people that I trust way more than you guys, I'm still going to have a little <laughs> bit of skepticism. It'll be a while. Yeah, it's, yeah. they have to uh, see who can eat the most chonko, uh, and then they get the sumo stock. I believe it. I've heard it from very smart people. Oh, all right. And uh, Flarek, just to wrap ooh. up the <laughs> lower divisions. Uh, Extremely some, smart people, right? <laughs> some of the people that we've been following, just ignoring everything else that's happening around me. Uh, Waki Ichiro, Terano Fuji, Roga, and Shiraishi all ended up with Kachi Koshis. Uh, Naya Musashi Kuni had Make Koshis, and Hoshoryu picking up his first ever Make Koshi at three and four Ooh. at Makushita two. So I don't know how far he'll drop, but it might be another couple of Bashos as long as he wins until we can expect to see him in Jurio. If he goes seven and zero, oh, maybe depending on how far he drops, he can make it to Jurio by the end of the year. But I think with this. Uh, Make Koshi, it's going to be until 2020 until we see Hoshoryu getting paid. And he just mm. turned 20, so this may have been his last shot at it. Yeah. yeah. It Poor kid. Mm-hmm. Poor so, old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to do it for the first part of our podcast. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I am going to severely embarrass myself during the <laughs> prediction series. Spoilers. As, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, trust me. Very, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be good. Uh, as Yokozuna Mac has determined my punishment, and then we'll hit a few other things before we peace out for the episode. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan, and this is a bonus episode called Sumo Size Me. Hi, this is Mac from the Grand Sumo Breakdown Podcast, and today is the first day in my quest to eat like a sumo wrestler for 30 days. Just sitting down to my first meal here, I've got a gallon of Chanko Nabe stew in front of me with what looks like at least a couple full chickens worth of meat in it, a rather obscene amount of noodles, a side of a pound of white rice, and a full fish of some sort with bones still in it. Okay. Uh, a healthy amount of sushi with plenty of toppings, some uh, shrimp tempura, a second bat of chanko abe, uh, a six pack of Asahi Super Dry, uh, a few dozen dumplings, at least 30 skewers of yakitori, the largest steam bun I've ever seen, um, a bowl of miso soup, a handful of taco yaki octopus balls, uh, quite, quite a bit of onigiri, a full uh, shabu shabu set up, um, a, a few ice cream pumps, a squid on a stick, steak on a stick, chicken on a stick, dongo on a stick, and soup on a stick, um, um, red bean paste donuts, tonkatsu ramen, some sort of crepes, and God, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the passing of Mac, who nearly made it a 30th of the way through his quest. Please remember him fondly and stay tuned for the remainder of this final episode of the podcast with an unexploded Mac. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Welcome back. It is time to get into our prediction results. All right. I don't think I said all right to start this off, Larrick. No, but we did. (laughs) Yep. You sure did. Why don't you tell us how everyone did, Ryan? Well, actually, why don't we have Yokozuna Mac tell us how everyone did? That is his his time to shine. (laughs) Indeed it is. Um, As Ryan so graciously alluded to previously, I won with two and a half points. Kakuryu gave me a half point with the Junyu show, got a point with a special prize from Tomokaze, thank you, sir, and a Makikoshi from Asunoyama. That one hurt, but I thought his concussion would play up a little bit more. Right behind me with two points was Jake, who picked Kakuryu for the Yu show. Oh, brilliant pick. Indeed. Also spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kachikoshi from Koto Eiko, also brilliantly done, Jake. Mm. Right behind him, half a point shy, was Flerick, who had Hakuho for the Yusho. Half with a half a point. point. Not mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. And then the dumpster fire that is his nemesis, Shodai, getting his Makikoshi. You nailed that one on the head. Yeah, he's just bad. Uh, right? <laughs> Which unfortunately brings up Very Ryan, unfortunately. <laughs> who only had Hakuho for the June Yusho as his only point. Yes. Everything else was a terrible pick. Wow. Indeed. Mm-hmm. It really was. And yeah. Like, yeah, like Hokuto Fushi, Kinboshi. Jeez. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's only got four in his career at least. One Amateur against hour. all of the Ozeki that have been around during his career. Yeah, and, terrible. Or oh, sorry, Yokozuna. You get Kimboshi's against Yokozuna. Yeah. <laughs> and Takayasu for the Yusho? Come on, you know that. That was that. looking good until his elbow got snapped. <laughs> Fair point. The other ones, is that's on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses there. No, but as Mac said, it <clears throat> is, as Yokozuna Mac said. <laughs> Thank you. It is unfortunate that I lost, not only for me and my pride, but for everybody else and what they're about to have to endure for three and a half minutes, approximately. Mac, tell everybody what is about to happen and why they should be so sad. (laughs) Well, because of Ryan's lack of foresight, his punishment was to sing a You Show song, similar to what I had done with Lady Gaga's Poker Face and You Show Race by former Yokozuna Jake. Well done, sir. In this one, Ryan's punishment is to sing Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears to some Yusho lyrics. Well, it's not going to be Yusho lyrics, but it's going to be Sumo All right, Sumo, Yusho, you know, have fun with it. It's going to be depressing for me as a loser, uh, everybody here at this table and listening to this podcast because I don't sing good. (laughs) That's not a skill of mine. 
Mm, yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. I can't believe I lost. I can't believe I lost. I've gone and blown it again. I made you believe that I was the best. But I'm not this ass to be a fluke because I've been great with my predictions. Just to lose to these morons, that is just so embarrassing. Oh, Jesus, this sucks. Oops, ho, kudo, Fuji. Your top's in my heart, but no Kinboshi. Oh, and ho, and ho, oops, me, Takeyumi. There was no prize for thee. I'm not that good at this. You see, my problem is this. I'm just too cocky. Thinking that my Richie will be the best. I cry watching them fail. They've made me a fool in so many ways. But to lose to such dimwits, that is just so embarrassing. Damn it, no. Oh, why, Takayasu, you started so hot. Then broke your elbow. Oh, and ho, and ho. One point from Haku Ho. Won the junior show. I'm not that good at this. I can't believe I lost. I can't believe I lost. Ryan, before you go, there's something I want you to have. Oh, you shouldn't have, but wait a minute. Isn't this... Yeah, yes it is. But this is just a picture of you flipping me off. Why would I want this? Well, Ryan, it's very simple. Because I'm Yokozuna Mac! Oops, I lost it again to these jerks. Have to sing this song, God damn it. Somehow, this is all go way to I'm not that good at this. Oops, you won die show. Got Kachi Koshi. Too good at sumo. Oh, and ho, and ho, and you, Tochi Ozan. All you needed was eight. I'm not that good at this. Oops, I did it again. I tried to predict. But I lost the game. Oh, and ho, and ho. I bet Mac feels real good. But he's lost this six times. You three can all shove it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, you're, you're right, Ryan. I did enjoy that. <laughs> I don't think I ever said anybody was going to enjoy that. Oh, no. well, maybe it was all in my head then because that was great. I feel like a couple of those lyrics you should uh, play... Play it back again just for a couple of those. Because I think you're maybe not too nice to your other uh, podcast mates. <laughs> oh, like because uh, to lose to these morons is so embarrassing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like the recording got corrupted. Uh, <laughs> we're going to need <laughs> it again. Uh, no. Uh, that's that's hopefully the last time you're going to hear Ryan singing on this podcast <laughs> for the good of everybody and humanity Oh, as no. A whole. That's, that's going back in the bowl. Well, obviously, that one's going back in the bowl, but hopefully, like, Jake loses or something. I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I don't know how long that song is going to be stuck in my head, but it's going to be a long freaking time because I practiced a lot. That's right. That was a lot of practice. <laughs> that was his A game. Yeah. Wow. That's as good as it gets. Uh, let's move on, shall we? Please. Yeah. Merci <laughs> mercifully. I, I will say that felt good. <laughs> it was awful, but it, it made so big, satisfying. I, I so knew satisfying. I knew the torture went into it as well. <laughs> yeah, it made me happy. So, in the sumo power rankings that we're <laughs> immediately moving to, um, this is our system where we have an average Rikshi rated at one thousand sumo points. 
I don't sure. know. And yeah. then everybody has a score relative to how good they are compared to average. You take points from people you beat. You lose points to people who beat you. Um, a lot of this lines up with, you know, how the how the Yusho race goes. For example, Kakuryu ended in first place, Hakuho in second place. Um, but like this, this helps show uh, it, it takes into account upsets or surprises quite a bit. Um, so even though the two Yokozuna are far and away the highest scores, there are other other bits and pieces we can get from this. For example, uh, I oh gosh, dang it, Koto Yuki is the <laughs> Koto Yuki is the top the point gainer. gainer. Yep, uh, he gained uh, a total of eighty eight points, going from basically a Jurio level Rikshi to an average level Rikshi. So that kind of uh, helps us illustrate that he's going to move right into the middle of the Megashira ranks, which is going to break my heart. <laughs> uh, Terutsu Yoshi, of course, also gained a ton mm-hmm. of points because he beat guys that were better than him, uh, according to the rankings. By default. Yeah. Yeah, by default, because he was in the very, very bottom slot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, th- this also shows uh, Kaisei, uh, even though he... Uh, did he have the far and away worst record on his own of the guys that wrestled the whole oh no he, he didn't wrestle the whole time he pulled out after that's right but his 11. but his 10 losses uh proved to be worse than for example like taki genji because of who those losses were to uh and just how that how that all shook out but um kaisei lost as much as koto yuki gained like exactly Ooh. so that's quite a bit <laughs> yeah um but yeah we'll uh uh, as usual for the last two Basho where I have followed through on this, uh, we'll, we will have a post on our blog about uh, all the full details. And now we will move into our fantasy standings, which might be a surprise to even the person who won at this table because he probably didn't follow along, but Flarek won fantasy. What? Yes, he did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the best Basho ever. <laughs> Cocker you wins. Flair gets the meaningless fantasy win. And I didn't lose. And Ryan has to do a song. (laughs) Ryan had to do a song. Ryan did his song. It's over. Yeah. (laughs) It's not happening again. I'm telling you, the file is corrupted. We're going to need to do it again. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How did I do? Tell me, tell, tell me the story of how I won, Ryan. Uh, the story of how Flarek won is that his first pick, Takayasu, managed to get a Kachikoshi oh. before abandoning Flarek's team. So beautiful. Uh, Ichi Nojo got a Kinboshi, which helped Flarek along, as that is worth bonus points. He Heck had yeah. Tomokaze getting a special prize and a Kinboshi mm. in points. there. Ooh, we didn't even have the Kinboshi calculated for Flarek's points. He wins by oh. even more. <gasps> oh. Wow. He now has 57 points instead of 55. Uh, That's a lot. He had Asanoyama, who didn't do a whole lot for him. <laughs> Awayama got him a Kachikoshi and no more. And Gagamaru was a terrible Jurio pick, getting him a total of one point. It's but okay. That I was still enough love you, to get Flarek and his team of six sweaty men to 57 points, which ekes out our guest fantasy player, Sunlon, and Sunlon Satori's six Sekitori. Sweet uh, you know, name. I never said that out loud before. Yeah, that's a fantastic name. Right. Sorry, it's, a, it's a sick name. Yeah. So he came in second place with 52. I came in third place with 50 points in my team. The joy of wrestling. Uh, Max, big round ground pounds had 44 points. And Jake, your pusher thruster knuckle dusters. How'd they do? <laughs> Not as good. That is correct, Jake. <laughs> you correct got you, are. you got one point from Goedo. Uh, you got uh, negative one points from Kaisei. Four from Onosho, two from Yago. You're lucky your last two picks of Mio Giryu and Yutakayama did well. They had more than two thirds of my points, those two guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure when, because we were in Japan, we weren't updating the spreadsheet very often. It was updated day 10 and then updated day 15. Jake had 25 points on day 10 and 27 points on day 15, gaining two points in five whole days of competition. So the next segment of our podcast that we're transitioning to immediately, please. (laughs) (laughs) That would be the GSB Awards, which is going to be a lot different moving forward than how we previously had it. Uh, So Flarek is going to be introducing our first award here. All right. So uh, the couple of matches, obviously we were quite busy this boss show uh one of the matches we have is groundhog day hold match. on Flarek, not so fast you're jumping ahead in the outline you Am so I? needlessly jumped over discussing what our next fantasy contest was going to be Flarek, how oh, could right. you I, I am so wrong i'm so sorry i did not drive the bus to that particular point all right you're fired ryan cover this one <laughs> that's right jake <laughs> so for our next fantasy contest if you would like to join us to be in our fantasy sumo league for the Akibasho 
on the eve of, not eve the heels there it is on the heels of such movies as spider-man far from home and avengers endgame we want you to send us your sumo themed superhero and the respective superpower if we were thinking ahead we would have had some cool examples for this yes yeah. but we literally came up with this 20 <laughs> minutes before we recorded so figure it out on your own mm-hmm. we believe in you you've done a really good job with these in the past we have faith we will shoot out a tweet after this episode's posted for you to reply with your favorite jokes. That's right, Jake. All right, Flarek, move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we, what are we talking about now? Uh, your I, I award. Need, I need intro. The GSB Awards, and the first one is going to be presented by our very own Flarek. <gasps> right, you are, Ryan. All right, so the first award we have is called Groundhog's Day. Uh, we have a match uh, versus Kota Shogaku versus Hakuho. Uh, which is uh, something, uh, if you've been watching Sumo before, uh, is something that's happened before. So much so, (laughs) they've met 63 times, actually. Fun fact, before. And so this was kind of a nice, another kind of, uh, it was kind of a blast blast from the past to see him face off again. And it was really cool because Kota Shogaku was actually able to get a win out this time against Hakuho. He, uh, He had seven wins versus Hakuho's 56, and Kota Shogiku was able to bring up to eight wins to kind of finish off. <laughs> bring into the second uh, most Makauchi Maku matches between two Rikshi. First place being Kota Shogiku versus Kisuno Sato. They had 66 matches against each other. Kota Shogiku having the slight edge of 36 wins versus 30 for Kisei no Sato. Oh, oh, yeah, that one was much, much closer than <laughs> Hakuho. I thought you were talking about like uh, Kota Shogiku has a, uh, Haku has a slight edge against Kota Shogiku. I would be very interested to see what Maku Uchi matchups anybody has any sort of lead against Hakuho all time. Uh, who is it? The the one guy who retired to Russia. Uh, I he, said Makuuchi decidedly to avoid that guy. Oh, yes. Aurora. No, Aurora, no, yeah. no Aurora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they probably don't exist. I wonder what his record is against Asa Shoryu. That one might be close. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that'd be interesting to look up right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only we had some way to do it. Uh, no, Sumo DB is down, so we're screwed. No, uh, perfect. <laughs> so uh, that was a fantastic <laughs> match. It was great to see him off again. So you get an award, Groundhog Day. Uh, How about you, also, Jake? Uh, Mac also had the alternate title for I'm this sorry, one. I'm sorry. That is Yokozuna Mac. Uh, indeed it is. I don't have to call him that. Yeah. I know, but, but I feel Ryan like did, I need so to. I, I feel like but, I haven't been given enough of those out, so I feel um, like nah, Mac came up with an excellent uh, alternate title for the Groundhog Day Award. What was that, Mac? <laughs> the Edge of the Tawara. The Edge of Tawara for you <laughs> Tom Cruise fans out there. Yeah, very nice. All both of you. All, well, <laughs> I like that movie, at least. Yeah, Edge, 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 edge That was a good movie. Good. Um, and, uh, we got uh, another, uh, kind of a, a set of awards here, uh, that go a little bit together. Uh, we have the, uh, the shameless coward award goes to Goedo for pulling out after seeing that, uh, he had some injury trouble, uh, right on day eight when we were there, he, he, couldn't he knew face we us. were coming. He didn't fight through those injuries. It was a complete coward to pull out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the bravery award where Tochi Notion recognized that he was injured and he pulled out um, to, you know, not aggravate it any further. Such a wise move on his part and brave to really kind of go against mm-hmm. the culture of if you're hurt, fight through that. Absolutely. So just such bravery on his part. Got to commend him for yeah. that. Yeah, completely, completely different from that yellow bellied coward Goedo. <laughs> coward. <laughs> <laughs> And that brings us to the match of the Basho Award. We have a few contenders for this one. My personal favorite, uh, maybe because it involves my personal favorite, Rikshi, was Hokuto Fuji versus Endo on day 15. Both of these guys had a 9-6 and six record going into this, and they're very closely ranked. And so we know that there's going to be a Komosubi slot opened up by Ryuden crapping the bed in this Basho. And so the winner of this match could very well take that Komosubi slot. And it was very hard fought, back and forth match. Uh, Hokuto Fuji had Endo on the rails multiple times in the match, but Endo fought back and ended up getting the better of Hokuto Fuji and winning the match in the end. It was very competitive, very hard fought the entire time, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, Endo was able to rally and win in the end, but like with no shortage of trying from Hokuto Fuji. Oh, yeah. It was just great, great. Uh, Hokuto Fuji was great. Endo was able to somehow withstand it. Yep. And Inka will win at the end. Very much so. Our second contender is Takeyasu versus Ryuden on day 15. This was a, sorry, not day 15, day two. This was a, <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> this yeah. was a 
very extended battle between these two guys, a battle trying to get the right grip, trying to see who could throw the other one out. Uh, and it just, they d- both decided, hey, I can't throw you out. You can't throw me out. Let's just do it at the same time. So despite Takayasu getting the win very clearly on all the replays, um, mm. no, nah, I'm the only, uh, yeah, I'm shamelessly yeah. biased. Yeah, that was very clearly the correct call <laughs> to have that match end up as a Tori Naoshi, which Ryudan did win. You're all win. blind. <laughs> <laughs> Ryudan did win the rematch of that, but I thought that that battle deserved to be nominated for match of the Basho. But in the end, the winner of match of the Basho goes to... Uh, oh, you're motioning like you want us to uh, talk yeah. instead yeah. of you. Yeah. This is weird. He doesn't yeah, usually I don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll go ahead and talk it out then. The match of the Basho is <laughs> the very last day, the very last match. We had the Yokozuna versus Yokozuna. Clash of the Yokozuna. For the, for the U Show. Of course, I'm talking about is Kakuyu versus Hakuho. Uh, the matchup that they, they had against each other. It was a fantastic belt match of where they both went in for a grip. And then they say, oh, no, I don't like the script. And they each kind of switched around a couple of times so they felt happy. But then Kaku is like, no, I want inside grip. And he just forced Hakuho out off to the side. It was awesome to see. There was a great Reddit thread uh, discussing, like, the intricacies of how that belt battle went. Um, I, I saw a very funny comment from uh, user Burble Stomp, who also has a very cool screen name. Uh, but he said it was, it was a very well-calculated match. Ah, I thought that was a good pun. Calculated. Calculated. I like yeah. that one too. Yeah. I'm going to steal that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Flarek, Flarek came up with that one. Yeah. It was me. <laughs> you, you, you made this? I made, I made this. I made this. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's always awesome to see the, you know, Yokozuna's healthy and uh, having a, a solid match against each other at the very end of the Basho. Exactly. We were talking about this uh, before we started recording, but like the number of times where we have a Basho where like the Yusho is decided on the last day. And the number of times we actually have two healthy Yokozunas, like Jake was saying, go off uh, uh, fighting against each other on the last day, it's it doesn't happen all that often. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't. It's a different energy yeah. for uh, Yokozuna versus Yokozuna matchup. And like it just when you have two guys of that high caliber going against each other, it just the sumo just seems so much far and above what we're seeing from everybody else. Because there's just like at the beginning of the match, they're just like in the middle, just switching grips so often. You mm-hmm. you don't see that in another match where uh, guys maybe aren't as familiar with their style or just familiar with all these different grips that they could get in this certain position that their guy has just adjusted into. And so just kind of seeing like the mind game of them playing the grips is just completely different level than much of the mm-hmm. other sumo we see. I, I do think this one was an excellent match by by any by any measure, technique wise. Uh, but but like also just that sense of awe you get, uh, Yokozuna versus Yokozuna over the last couple of years. That's something that we it's fifteen seconds that we might get like maybe three mm-hmm. times a year or mm-hmm. something like that. Know. You know, maybe it's so tasty. It's, <laughs> it's so sweet. Just that tiny little oh. shot of sweet, sweet top level sumo that is like the the two best in the entire world doing something and this one had the added benefit of if one lost that could force a playoff yeah. which is even sweeter that would oh, a yokozuna oh, that playoff been, could you imagine <laughs> that would have been the stuff right there we mm-hmm. haven't seen a playoff for it's been two years now well, it'll be two years at aki when harama fuji beat goedo mm-hmm. so that was one where it came down mm-hmm. to the final match because harama fuji was the only yokozuna and he faced goedo in the final day beat Goedo, and then beat Goedo again uh, to win his final Yusho in his career. So that's the last time we saw a playoff, and I've been itching for one ever since. Like, once we get yep. down to days 11, 12, 13, I'm telling all the guys, okay, these are all the different scenarios we oh can get God. so that we get a five-way playoff. He Let's see it happen. He wouldn't <laughs> shut up about it. We I was just really trying. hoping for a Teretsuyoshi Hakuho Kakuryu playoff, but that did not end We were happening. just trying to enjoy our vacation. <laughs> yeah. And here is Ryan with his tables of, like, what matches have to happen. <laughs> all right, so after one day, here's how we can get a 42 Dixie playoff. <laughs> it can your... happen. Believe. <laughs> All right. Believe it. All right. I, the one thing I want to say uh, is the record now, Kakuru now has 8 to 41 against Hakuho. I think it's kind of funny that uh, uh, Kota Shokiku uh, just uh, got 8 as well. Uh, but, so, like. But with 56 losses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It took detail, him 15 more matches. Details. I think, I think it's funny how uh, Yokozuna and uh, old time Ozeki, they both have like the exact same uh, record against Hakuho. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Hakuho is pretty good at sumo. He's pretty good at the sumo. <laughs> Hakuho has more Zensho Yushos than Kakuryu just has plain Yushos. Or it, victories over him. 
Yeah. Yeah. But th- Holy and Nagoya, crap. Nagoya 2019. Do you know who is the best? <laughs> Tomokaze. Tomokaze. Because he beat Kakuyu. <laughs> By the transitive property, Tomokaze <laughs> is the Yusho winner. And Dude. all the like four guys that beat Tomokaze. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, who does have the unofficial, like the last person to be, who, who fought Tomokaze last? Quick. Uh, Tomokaze lost to Tedetsu Yoshi. So Tedetsu Yoshi <gasps> would oh, have. The unofficial Yusho belt. Yes. Power to him. That's yeah, more prestigious than the official June Yusho. Not somebody else. Beat and him of course, the official Yusho as well. I don't Wait, think no, so. No. Oh, we have to actually we gotta figure this that. out. Uh, yeah. Ichi Nojo. Nope, never mind. That was day 12. That was before the CAC. Okay. Yeah. The, cac- <laughs> the calculated uh, loss. So he didn't get essentially Zencho Yusho. So never mind. <laughs> All right. While you calculate, we can probably talk about more about this match. It was great. Or well, other than Ryan's this, sucky right? predictions, we had some fans that had some very bold predictions that came through. Ryan, why don't you lead us into that? We sure Ooh. did, Yokozuna, Mac. Thank you. That was a great Swell transition. Segue. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Very well done. A plus. You should drive the bus. Yeah, you oh, should. All right. Go ahead, Ryan. Ryan, take it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the moon rules. Uh, gave us a bold prediction of before the end of the Basho, there will be no less than five withdrawals. Withdrawals? Withdrawals. Withdrawals. <laughs> I, I got too much oops, I did it again on the mind, and I can't speak properly. I apologize. And he was absolutely correct, as we had Yoshikaze withdraw before the Basho started. All of the, all four Ozeki withdrew at least before the Basho or before the end of it. That's five right there. And the icing on top of the cake is Kaisei also pulled out in the second week. So we had a total of six Huge O in this Basho, so good call at the moon rules. At Casey Mustang with the most accurate prediction of <laughs> all time. The GSB crew will have jet lag. Guys, when did you get over your jet lag? Because just you're, to lay tomorrow, it out. You're implying <laughs> that I'm over it now. Just to lay out what our travel was like on our way back. So our we woke up 7 a.m. Saturday morning in Japan. But locally, that would have been 5 p.m. Friday night, our time. And so by the time we got, at least by the time I got back in town and in my bed, it was 1 a.m. Sunday. So that is 30 plus hours being awake with maybe one or two 20 to 30 minute naps on an airplane. Yeah, the plane naps don't count. No. No. (laughs) And so Sunday was a lost day. (laughs) Just completely, I was a dead person. Monday, (laughs) Monday, I thought I was good until I actually got into work. I'm like, oh no, this isn't going to work. Yeah. (laughs) No, every single day this week, I've woken up early enough to like watch an episode of some TV show before work because I just couldn't sleep in. And then by the time I get to work, obviously, I'm just, uh, like you said, a dead person. Mm hmm. I, I've had more energy drinks this week than I think ever in my life. So much coffee. <laughs> so much coffee. I'm pretty much back to normal sleeping schedule and feeling good. I was pretty much back to normal Wednesday, but my wife, who is the queen, well, not the queen of sleeping in, your wife, Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be Katie. Katie's got that yeah. one. Uh, Gabby's pretty good at it, too, but she's been up like before 6 o'clock every morning, so it really threw her off. Yeah, that that's me. It, it was, it was, uh, blah, blah, blah. That, was <laughs> that was definitely the... Over. Yeah, <laughs> no that that was definitely the only the only downside of our vacation there. Blair, how about you? How's your how was your jet lag? Uh, it was not great. I think uh, I definitely woke up at like five a.m. I think all of us did like the day after we got yep. back. Yeah, and it's just been I have like two really really shitty days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly there, but like even today I woke up like super early in the morning, like yeah. at six. And I do feel bad, Flarek and Mac. I may have jinxed us a little bit with our airline travel quiz that we did on the preview episode where i mentioned <laughs> how many bags were lost by <laughs> oh yeah uh, that's true that happened. that's true so flarek and mac did not get their bags when they arrived back <laughs> home <laughs> when did when did they show up oh uh, the next day they magically magically At showed up one o'clock the in the step. morning <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything counted for all good there yep no mm-hmm. issues all right perfect so uh hardy screw you to kc mustang for that <laughs> Beautifully accurate prediction. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's your fault. Moving on, at Stephen J. Buck predicted that Tomokaze would extend his Kachi Hoshi streak another month. And not only that, he extended it another two months. Good for you, Tomokaze. Oh, nice. Two for the price of one. That uh, that same prediction is only going to get bolder and bolder as Tomokaze works his way up the ranks. Mm-hmm. That's true. He should. He will be in the zone of death in this upcoming Basho, so he's going to be facing his toughest competition. One other thing on Tomokaze, I remember in our preview episode, I talked about how I didn't want him to do super well. 
Uh, I kind of was hoping that he'd get the slow burn, you know, eight and seven, nine and six on the way up so that he wouldn't like get, you know, blasted into a new level of competition suddenly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that uh, I'm expecting a, a rough Aki for him. I mean, yeah. he's one and oh against Yokozuna. So really, how mm-hmm. hard can anybody else be? That's that's a good point. Yeah. OK, anyways. And an anti shout out to at Josh. I. Uh, who predicted that an Ozeki would win the U show. Nope. Uh, Hakuho would either drop out or not participate. Nope. Kaisei would get 10 plus wins. Uh, he got 10 plus losses. Uh, Tamawashi would win the June U show. No. And no. Asanoyama would get 10 wins. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. So, Josh, I want you to predict for our next boss show <laughs> that Takeyasu will not win the U show. <laughs> Please predict that Takeyasu <laughs> will Please fight for all 15 days and lose all 15 matches. Please put it in writing. <laughs> <laughs> Your anti curse is what we really need right now. <laughs> Before we wrap up, we will do our traditional favorite moment of the Basho, and we will start with none other than Yokozuna Mac. Why, thank you. This one is a bittersweet favorite moment for me because a little baby boy got crushed, but seeing my personal favorite, Chiyomaru, completely win was just great for me actually witnessing a win because he didn't do all that great in this that was, tournament that was on day eight where we saw it we Indeed, saw it live but yeah. it was a crush out with enho it was like oh <laughs> that hurt but Jumaru won. <laughs> no my baby <laughs> i i forgot to mention this i wanted to exclude us part us being at day eight Aww. as your favorite moment of the yeah, that's, show that's not you gonna didn't I'm say sorry. that <laughs> i know i didn't i forgot to say that so if you could <laughs> try because that's obviously all of our favorite moments of the boss show. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll, I'll do my best here. Uh, my favorite moment was when we got to see sumo live <laughs> on day eight of the boss show in particular. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a great day of matches, but I think by far the most memorable individual moment was meeting friend of the show. Kisuno Sato slash Ariso at the oh, beginning yes. of the day. No, oh. making As, that, Young kids day. Uh, yeah, making making a uh, young thirty six year old or thirty three. Hey, you and I looked at each other and started like giggling like schoolgirls, like, Oh my yeah. god, oh my god, that was him. But as as somebody on Twitter, I apologize, I can't remember who said this, but that is a picture that we will show our grandchildren. That yes. is a huge deal. That is something that I am going to print and put on the wall of our podcastorium here. Yeah, that, exactly. is, that was amazing. It, I'm the exact same thing as you, Jake. Uh, you can vouch for me as everyone. I was still giggling about that picture <laughs> yes. like days after that, like weeks after that. Is, I'm so happy and we were so lucky to get that. Yeah, and just, we, that's something that's really amazing. That was awesome. Yeah, so yeah. freaking cool. It was so good. I guess non uh, when we were there, I guess match at the Basho. It was pretty good. But all oh, that Kisei picture, <laughs> <laughs> that Kisei picture. So uh, uh, one one last thing I got for you guys. We um, uh, we got a message from our field correspondent, B. Uh, this was actually early in the Bosch show. Um, I, I regret I didn't listen to it at the time, but uh, why don't we play that real quick and see what uh, he, his thoughts were on the Bosch show. Hey, guys, it's B. It's finally here. Oh, when you guys had mentioned we would be able to get together after almost a year of nothing but remote reports, I knew that my Tambata had finally come true. Two whole weeks of sumo and Japanese culture watching together. You know, I keep a brave face on for all these reports, and I'm really grateful for the field correspondent gig. But real talk, it can get a little lonely out here just filing these reports for each of these pay-per-views. But after all the stresses of planning the trip, and prepping and scheduling and taking time off and planes and trains and all of that, I couldn't be more excited. And now, the day's finally here. It is July 7th, 2019, and I am here at the beautiful Des Moines International Airport, ready for two weeks of sumo with you guys in beautiful Iowa. Ah, oh, I'll set up out front at the pickup. Let, uh, let me know when you're here. Whoops. Uh, I I was I do actually feel a little bit better because I was very concerned that we didn't see him while we were over in I, Japan. I just kind of feel bad that our wires got cr- maybe he's still in town and we can try to hit him up. <laughs> Not on the salary we're giving. Him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! No, I uh, back to Kyoto. I with probably should have hitchhike your way over to wherever the next tournament's going to be held. I'll probably should have double checked those dates when we were buying yeah. tickets. Yeah. Anywho, 
So if you want some more GSB in your life and you don't want to wait until the Aki preview episode, good news. We're going to have some bonus episodes and uh, it's going to start off with next week. Jake and I will be recording our typical Bonds K prediction episode of which Jake does very little work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's at my house, so I at least have to put on pants. So we will have that. We are also planning an episode where we will discuss the rest of our Japan travels that did not involve sumo. There's a good solid two weeks there, so that'll be a fun episode. We might get the wives involved with that again. Mm. Let's then try again, and keep, we might not. Let's try and keep the episode itself shorter than two weeks. No promises. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jake, we got, we got space to fill. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so much content. Jake has been working on a new stat regarding Kimorites. Uh, so we will be discussing that in an upcoming episode. Jake, you got any more insight on that one? Nope. All right, perfect. And then finally, we did have Kisei no Sato retire last year, and he will have his Danpatsu Shiki, or his haircutting ceremony, coming up, I believe, in September after Aki. And also, Amanishiki recently retired, so you can probably look forward to one or two uh, special episodes delving into their... Uh, history and their sumo uh, depends on how much information Jake can dig up on if it's one episode <laughs> per each guy or if we mash it into one episode. We'll see how long the Wikipedia article is. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but besides those things, the next Basho is going to start, I believe, the second Sunday of September. Flarek has something to say. I, what was your favorite moment, the Basho, Ryan? Oh, that's a good question. Probably... If I'm going to Is avoid it seeing sumo live yes. on day eight, yes. no, I was going to say having the U show come down to the final match. I was really hope I was really hoping Haku was going to take it. One, I'm a bigger fan of Haku than I am Kakuryu. <laughs> uh, two, I'm the biggest fan of playoffs. <laughs> playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. We're talking We're, about playoffs, playoffs. <laughs> Practice. That's um, like the one like regular sports meme I get. <laughs> <laughs> Now, esports memes. Ooh. <laughs> Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool memes. I'm actually becoming hip. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I know some of the soccer me- memes as well. I don't think Liverpool memes are hip here in America, though. Yeah. It's did you see someday. that ludicrous display last night? <laughs> <laughs> I know, they did. What yeah. was Walcott thinking, however, that joke goes from that <laughs> yeah. episode of IT Crowd? Anyway. Arsenal always tries to walk it in. Yeah. So yeah, Aki Basho <laughs> yeah. starts the second Sunday of September. There'll be plenty of GSB content before then. So if you enjoyed this podcast and want to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service, we would greatly appreciate it. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We and actually finally have some good pictures on Instagram. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah. Don't expect that in the future. Yeah, yeah. Our daily lives are much less exciting than Japan travels. But uh, you can check out our blog, GrandSumoBreakdown.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Ryan, who am I? Uh, you are Yokozuna Mac, and I want to take this time to sincerely apologize <laughs> once again for what I put everybody through about 25 to 30 minutes ago. It it was just a sad, sad display, really, and it's not, really a form of torture, I believe, and so for that to be placed upon you guys, you you come to this show for entertainment. You come to this show uh, to hear about sumo. You don't come to listen to men that are almost 30 years old. Oh, God, no. No, make it go away! (laughs) Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.